10 minutes and 25 seconds left to go in the second quarter. The New Orleans Saints surprising the Los Angeles Rams and leading 10 to 7. Rizzaro ready to kick off. The deep man is Wendell Tyler. Jim Jodat on his right. Cullen Bryant on his left. And the kick goes deep over Bryant's head and into the end zone. And he will not take it out. The wise leap. Wendell Tyler downing the ball in the end zone. See, we've got some news for you. On Saturday, November the 5th, it is Championship Saturday. The series championship of women's tennis. Chris Everett, Virginia Wade, Billie Jean King, Martina Navratilova, and Betistova from Mission Hills. There'll be the World Middleweight Boxing Championship. Rodrigo Valdez and Benny Briscoe will also have the 26th running of the one and a half mile race course at Laurel. That's all coming up on Championship Saturday. Plus the world's strongest man. Oh! First and 10 from the Ram 20. Waddy is in motion. And that's McCutcheon with Hara out in front of him. And Hara was just outnumbered. Price and Ernie Jackson coming up to make the tackle. Boy, those Rams, they just run and run and run. They believe in it. Chuck Knox believes in it. It'd be almost impossible for him to convert over. He believes so strongly in a strong running game. Two weeks ago, they ran the ball 61 times against New Orleans. Second and six from the 24 of Los Angeles. Waddy is right. Jackson left. Nelson, the tight end, right side. And it's a quick release to Harold Jackson, and Clarence Chapman knocks him out of bounds immediately at the 33-yard line. The surprising thing about Harold Jackson this year is he usually averages about 17, 18 yards per catch. He's been coming in something like about 12 yards per catch this year because of patterns just like that. Yeah, New England longest over, is 37 this year. New England over the Jets, 17-10. Jets a surprising team this year. Got them going. Richard Todd got them. First and 10 for the Rams. They spotted on the 33-yard line. Waddy left and Jackson right. Still Capoletti and McCutcheon. McCutcheon. Nowhere. Billy Waddy, who was wide left, was trying to come back in and get a block off and seal off the right side, but it didn't work. Pat Hughes came up to make the tackle. Let's take a look at Billy Waddy right here. He got a would-be crackback block that time, but he couldn't make up his mind who he was going to get. He just kind of hit him behind there. Don't see me on the film, but I don't make my block. So far in the Ram rushing game, McCutcheon carried 10 times for 27 yards. So it is second and 10 from the 33. And Waddy in the slot left with Jackson. They motion him and Jackson picks him up. Here comes McCutcheon. Hara trying to block. And Bob Pollard puts his arms around him and drives him to the turf. Big Bob, 6'3", 250. Seven-year man out of Weber State. He's the defensive captain. Dennis Hara, what a, he was the number one draft choice along with Mike Fultz and Doug, Doug France, what, two, three years ago? Well, the Rams have built up their draft choices over the years. And remember, George Allen hadn't been that long since he left the Rams and left it with no draft choices. What yeah, a job really Carol Rosenblum, back. Don Klosterman, and his people have done. Third and nine from the Ram 34-yard line. Whoop. That was Alex Price who jumped. Hayden going down the middle of the Wadi at midfield, and that's where he's belted. Fumble, but I believe after the whistle, and that's true. It was Chuck Crist who recovered the loose ball, but it was after the whistle. Flag on the play, Alex Price, number 75, I think was guilty of jumping around, and of course the Rams will decline the penalty, and they'll set up shop first and 10, just across the midfield strike. The Rams have been a pretty good third down team all year. They've converted 45% of going into today's game. Today, they're four out of five on third down situations, and that's plenty good enough. The Saints, on the other hand, they have not been a third down team. They've allowed opposition or opponents to convert 58% of the, their first third down. Uh, ah, let's go. Okay. <laughs> enough of that. Yeah, enough of that. First and 10 on the New Orleans 49. Waddy in a slot left and now in motion. Wendell Tyler is in there now. Play action fake to Tyler. All alone is Terry Nelson. He runs over little Ernie Jackson and carries it inside the 15. And Ernie Jackson was hit by a truck by the name of Terry Nelson. And everybody oh. ran over, ran oh. over everybody. <laughs> Look at the arm. Pat Hayden, never known for a strong arm, is accurate enough. Look at this. Does he punish Ernie? Ernie was hurting and hurting worse now. 
Rampage. Oh, are we having fun? Let's get it on. <laughs> Wherever he thinks he is. First and ten. They spot the ball on the 14-yard line. Phillips and Tyler in the backfield now, and Waddy in a slot right. Inside Harold Jackson. Aiden giving to Wendell Tyler. And he is dragged down as he tried to get to the 10-yard line. It was Clarence Chapman who came up to make the tackle. Tom Mack, number 65. Watch him pull and watch him block. Never missed a game for the Rams. 12 years. Been one of the better guards in football. Knocking out Chuck Chris there. That guy put some incitement in it. Wendell Tyler. He, he entertained me the other night. Second and eight. The ball on the New Orleans 12-yard line. We have seven minutes to go in the second quarter. New Orleans leading 10 to 7. Waddy is right and Jackson left. And it's Rod Phillips trying to find a hole and there isn't any there. He tried to move around Rick Saul, but no matter where he went, Saul's man was taking him there and that just messed up the play. As we say, Rick Saul, you all know about him with the two brothers he's had playing in professional football. He's been around about eight years. It took him six years to become a starter. He's been a good one for him. Rams have had, through the years, they've had good centers, though. Big Cullen Bryant comes in now on a third and nine, so it is Bryant and Phillips. Tyler goes out. Harold Jackson and Billy Waddy split on the 13-yard line of New Orleans. And oh! it's back in. Chuck Smith grabs him on the 20-yard line. Oh, what a play. Well, that was quick. Chuck Chris. Safety blitz got him. Watch it. He was not ever a football player at Penn State. He was a basketball player, and he was quick there. Neither one of the backs could pick him up like a bullet. So the blitz really pays off. Rafael Septien is now asked to kick a field goal to get the Rams tied. The Saints are leading 10 to 7. Septien is 6 for 7 in field goal attempts. They will spot the ball on the 26-yard line, so it's a 36-yard field goal attempt. His longest has been 33 yards. Nolan Cromwell puts it down, and the kick is good. And so the Rams have tied it up, thanks to the field goal from Rafael Septien. 5.49 to go in the second quarter. We got a dandy. The Rams 10, the Saints 10. The Bell System recognizes that many seemingly unrelated business problems are really communications problems in disguise. So we've provided our account representatives with the skills and equipment they need to take a company's problems and our solutions to them and fit them together into a total communications system. For we firmly believe that in solving problems for companies like yours, the system is the solution. Sitting around, Mom. Let's take a ride in my new Ford pickup. All right, let me drive. Hope I can handle it. This is the one that's built tough with Ford's exclusive twin I beam suspension and a new four speed overdrive option. Far out. And extensive rust fighting materials on underbody parts. What do you think, Mom? You may think I'm off my rocker. This Ford is tough. Of all Ford trucks registered over the last 12 years, 93 out of 100 are still on the job. Sheer Bedlam's all in a day's work when Mama signs on as Rhoda's hired hand. She is dragging me up the walls, across the ceiling, out the window. Someday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. The Rams and Saints all tied 10-10. Septien kicking off with 5.49 to go in the second quarter. This one not too deep, grabbed by Willis at the 9. To the 25 and stacked up shy of the 30-yard line. A return by Willis. Jim Jodat making the tackle, and now New Orleans takes over first and ten. A reminder, championship Saturday, the series championship of women's tennis. We'll also have the World Middleweight Boxing Championship, Rodrigo Valdez and Benny Briscoe. Plus the 26th running of the Classic from Washington, D.C., the one-and-a-half-mile grass course, the major turf race in the United States, Laurel Race Course, and the fifth event of the world's strongest men, the tire toss for distance accuracy. <laughs> the tire toss. First and ten from the Saints, 28. Tony Galbraith wrapped up as he got across the 30-yard line. Jim Youngblood, along with the middle of the Rams, Dave Elmendorf also, Jim Youngblood at the bottom. In case you joined us a little late, 
New Orleans recovered a Lawrence McCutcheon fumble and Rick Zaro kicked a 23-yard field goal. Harold Jackson caught an 18-yard touchdown pass from Pat Hayden. Tony Galbraith punched over from the two-yard line. And then Zaro, there was another 36-yard field goal by Tepien to tie it up 10-10. Bobby Scott looking right. Gets pressure, got it away. And it's the tight end, Henry Childs, who made the reception just shy of the 45-yard line. Henry Childs on the play action. Lakes to Galbraith there. Pass protection is quite adequate. Scott rolling a little bit. Childs open, just hits the spot. They have been going to the tight ends, as I say. They were continuing to go to the tight ends because of, well, various things. Injuries to the wide receivers and the fact that they're using double cover. Double on the wide receiver, whatever that is. First and ten from the New Orleans 44-yard line. Gillian left and Herman right. And here comes Strawn, but he is met by Larry Brooks, and that's the end of the story. They knock him back to the 41-yard line. There's another player you don't hear a lot about, but he's one of the top tackles in football is Larry Brooks. He led the Rams in sacks last year with 13, I believe. That's right. And he has two so far this year. The ball on the 43-yard line where they finally spot it. Second down, a loss of one on the play. Second and 11. A 10-10 tie. As you see, 3.56 left to go in the second quarter. Herman is right and Gilliam left. Galbraith and both backs go out. Scott going down the right side to Herman, overshoots his man, Pat Thompson, touchdown. So that is an integral part of the New Orleans offense. They're looking past now. Jackie Wallace comes in in a prevent defense. Bob Brzezinski goes out. Third and 11 from the 43. Herman is right and Gilliam left. Strawn and Galbraith, back of Scott. And the backs go out. And Scott overshooting his intended receiver, Tony Galbraith, Jim Youngblood, running right alongside of him. So the third and 11 went down the drain, and we'll see Tom Blanchard. It's the first time we have seen a punt by New Orleans. Last year, Tom Blanchard punted 101 times. Where at your knee doing this? Where at your knee? You know, he almost retired, and it might have been for that reason. He was playing more than the offense or the defense. He had to be wary. 101 punts. Woo. This year, he's had six inside the 20-yard line, and, of course, that really bears a strong part of a kicker's story. <laughs> Billy Waddy and Cullen Bryant are deep. It is Waddy on the 12-yard line. Oh, New Orleans recovers. Recovered by Pat Hughes. Oh, got Gracious me. Waddy, so explosive. He will bring you to the edge of your seat. Look at the speed right here. Let's see how loosely he is carrying it. The other night he was. And you see an arm come in there and shake it loose. Clarence Chapman was the first man to cause him to fumble. And then Craig Cassidy, Hopalong's boy. There's an exhausted Pat Hughes who came over to New Orleans from the New York Giants in a, a deal. He was the Giants' most valuable player in 74. Do we have a flag on that? There's some kind of conversation going on out there. Let's see. Emmanuel Zander is very much in the discussion. He is the only New Orleans player down there. As another free agent, Emmanuel Zander's let go by the Dolphins earlier, and Shula called him and said he could play, but he just can't play for the Dolphins. He can play somewhere in football. He's been their most consistent and most outstanding offensive lineman for the Saints the last three or four years. Now Bobby Scott wants to get the low down along with Jack Youngblood. Billy Waddy in returning the punt, hit by Clarence Chapman and Craig Cassidy. And if you're old enough to remember, hop along Cassidy, who played for Ohio State. That's his son playing here for New Orleans today. Number 73 offense during the dead ball, first down and 25. So the so-called dead ball foul, Joe Campbell, to the fouls on. Joe has been in a fight every game. This is the seventh time he's caused up commotion. He's a very aggressive number one draft choice for Maryland. He backs up Bob Pollard, and on the special teams, he apparently got in an unnecessary lick and was caught for it. 
So it is first and 25 for New Orleans as they take over on the Ram 25, and that's the second costly Ram fumble and recovery for New Orleans. How costly remains to be seen. First man, Tony Galbraith, has his jersey ripped away as he gets down to the 20, and he's 0 for 2 in jerseys. You tell me he isn't a player, though. I like him. Every play, brother, whether he's blocking or coming out of the backfield or running with the football, he'll, he'll give you a fine effort. Boy, you talk about a, a tattered and torn. That thing was just decimated. It looked like he'd been rode hard and hung up wet. Wow. Yeah. Kim Jones will take over for him while Galbraith finds another jersey. He has had two stripped off the pads. Second down and 20. Remember the personal foul made it first and 25. They picked up five. The ball on the Ram 20-yard line. Back to split. Scott's going to pass. Right side to Herman. He beat Pat Thomas and caught it inside the five-yard line. He'll take about three or four steps downfield and just break into the goal post. It's a quick post route. There he is. Waiting for the linebacker to clear. If it's on the money, which it is, as you see him hitting right in the numbers, it's hard to defend against. Pat Thomas can hardly be faulted for that. First and goal for New Orleans on the Ram 3. Tony Galbraith, they're going to run out of uniform number 34. He's burned up two, and he's now back in there in a brand-new jersey. And the Rams are with their backs against the wall. Two minutes to go in the second quarter. First and goal from the three. Herman right, Gilliam left. Out of the eye, and there'll be a timeout with the two-minute warning on the scoreboard. It's been a great first half. A lot to go. The Saints 10 and the Rams 10 with New Orleans driving. I control this television network. I control the other networks, too. I pick the shows, and I pick the times. With the new Zenith video cassette recorder, I can tape anything on TV and watch it anytime I want. I can watch one show and tape another, or tape shows when I'm out. With the new Zenith video cassette recorder, I make the TV schedule fit my schedule. Zenith, now that great name in TV, brings you another great way to enjoy it. We'd like to tell you the cold, hard facts about another kind of motor oil. An oil that will give the average car up to 10 extra miles per tank full of gas. A synthetic engine lubricant that can also help a properly maintained car get started at 35 below zero. Mobile One, the oil that saves you gas and turns over at 35 below. A 10-10 tie with two minutes left to go in the second quarter. Vin Scully along with Alex Hawkins from the great indoors of Louisiana, the Superdome. Two very costly Ram fumbles. One by Lawrence McCutcheon, led to a New Orleans field goal. Now a second fumble on a punt by Billy Waddy, recovered by New Orleans, and on a great pass to Don Herman. New Orleans in great position to take the lead as they go back into the clubhouse. Well, so then when you come here in Louisiana to play in the Dome or wherever you're playing down here, you expect the Saints to give you a good ball club. They get 50, 60,000 people, sometimes 70,000. These ca crazy Cajuns hollering and hooping it up. They respond to him. They're hooping and hollering now. Chuck Muncie is back in there going in for Mike Strawn. So you have Muncie and Galbraith, as they call him down here, the thunder and lightning backfield. Muncie is the lightning. Herman goes wide right and Gilliam left. Third down and goal to go from the three. The backs are split. The Rams will be looking past. Scott lays it up and overshoots Herman. He and Pat Thomas were squared away down in the far corner. Herman looked a little bit confused that time as to whether to go straight down the field or break it to the sideline. There was some confusion. Here comes Tom Blanchard and Rick Zaro, so they're going to go for three points. The only surprise in looking back over New Orleans games, as we mentioned to you, they have thrown five touchdown passes to the tight end, but this time they went to the wide receiver, Don Herman, and they couldn't do it. For Rick Zaro, remember, he made a 23-yard field goal, and he missed one from the 50. And look out, it's Blanchard passing in the end zone. Oh, oh what a play. Where did that one come from? I don't know. I never saw Lois Crooms make no catch before. 
Would you believe that? A third year man out of Tennessee Tech. All the time a defensive end. And he's in there on the offense to catch a touchdown. Last week, the Cardinals uh, won that ball game primarily because of the fake field goal in that game. Why, Henry Stram, he when learned you... something. <laughs> Look at old Henry Strutt. <laughs> Look at Henry Strutt. Dave Almendorf arguing with the officials. The Rams are furious, perhaps over the New Orleans alignment. Elmendorf, quite outspoken. Oh, Chuck Knox hollering from the sidelines on the far side of the field. But the Rams have been burned on a touchdown pass to Mr. X. You, you got it. And Rick, Rick Zorro Zorro. will try to make it 17 to 10, New Orleans. Blanchard holds the kick. It's good. And so with one minute and 52 seconds left in the first half and a wild one, New Orleans 17, the Los Angeles Rams 10. Prestone, Prestone, who needs Prestone? Prestone, Prestone? You need Prestone. If your antifreeze is worn out or you don't have enough, you could be in trouble. So put in a fresh fill of Prestone, too, to prevent corrosion and freeze ups. Prestone, Prestone, we need Prestone. Prestone, Prestone, you need Prestone. The Saints leading the Rams 17 to 10 on a touchdown pass to a defensive end. And Rick Zorro kicking off to the burned Rams who are mean, sullen, and mutinous right about now. You just don't expect that to happen to the Rams. Not the Los Angeles Rams. Boy, they'll be looking at the game film several times to see just where Alois Grooms was prior to the snap from center. All right, Zorro kicking deep. Wendell Tyler and Jim Jodat, and it's Tyler from the goal line with Jodat out in front. And Tyler gets to the 30-yard line and falls forward to the 31-yard line. Joe Campbell, your friend and mine, making that, the tackle. That our boy, Joe. Where'd he get on down there? A 31-yard return, and there's a sad story as they bring Tom Myers to the dressing room. He has been plagued with injuries the whole time he's been with the Saints. He is the mainstay in that secondary. Calls the defensive signals, and they will miss him. No doubt about that. Six-year man out of Syracuse, Myers survived a bout with cancer two years ago. Beat the big C, huh? We have one minute, 46 seconds left to the half. The ball on the Ram 31-yard line, first and 10. Backs a split, Hayden will put it up. A little quick one to John Capaletti with Dennis Harris throwing a block for him. Jackson undercut him, and he sails across the 40. The clock is still going. Capaletti staying well inbound, and now we'll have a timeout quickly to slow things down. The Rams trying to get back into the dressing room even. To backtrack, New Orleans recovered a McCutcheon fumble and got a field goal. Hayden hit Harold Jackson for an 18-yard touchdown pass. New Orleans drove 85 yards with Galbraith punching it over from the one. There was a 36-yard field goal by Septien. And then, of course, we saw Waddy's fumble recovered by New Orleans and the touchdown pass to Elias Grooms, who finally got his name in the paper. First and 10 from the Ram 41. Hayden to McCutcheon in the air and dropped. Dennis Field was all over him. And McCutcheon unable to hold on to it. Joe Feathersfield, who led the team in tackles in 1975 and 76. And he has missed only one game in six years. So you see a lot of number 58 when you come to New Orleans. He uh, plays a run a whole lot better than he does the pass. Played the pass well there. In the first meeting two weeks ago, these teams, he, had, he led the All-Packers with 13 for the Saints in that game. Well, he we have a minute and 15. 
second and ten. Hayden trying to get on the scoreboard from his own 41. Down the middle to Billy Waddy. And Waddy is caught by Chuck Christ at the 40-yard line and falls forward to about the 37, and the clock is still going. Number two draft choice from Colorado. He can fly. Faster Time than a speeding out. bullet. Los Angeles. Faster than a speeding bullet. Watch him. 23 Fluid yards on this one, Hawk. He just bounces, Dan. He just bounces. I love to see him. Speed like that with he and Jackson, they can give you headaches, brother. Pat Hayden cannot be faulted for that throw at all, can he? Mm -mm. Chuck Chris closing in here. Puts an initial hit on him. Is that Ernie Jackson? He will throw his body around, bro. So with one minute and one second to go to the half, Pat Hayden, who has passed for a 56% so far this year, is better than that today. And he has one touchdown pass, 18 yards to Harold Jackson. Hayden is 8 for 12, and he has one minute left to hit the end zone. Well, so I don't believe you could consider Pat Hayden a sleeper in any means. People were a little bit reluctant to draft him, not so much because of his size. They didn't know what he was going to do academically with the Rhodes Scholar and scholarship and what have you. He went in, I think, the seventh round the Rams picked him up, and everybody knows his story about the World Football League. He's continued his studies in the offseason over in England, and he's about through those. Uh, he's got a bright, bright future ahead of him. I like him in college. Gracious me. He's just a winner. With one minute left to go, the Saints have three timeouts, and the Rams have two. It is first and ten for Los Angeles on the New Orleans 37-yard line. Pat Hayden talking to his coach, Chuck Knox. Hayden has had only one interception thus far this year, and he's passed for four touchdowns. He is not really a bomber. His longest pass, 46 yards. He averages about eight. And if you remember some of the great quarterbacks, for instance, Bart Starr didn't have an overwhelming arm, but they made it up for it, knowing what they could do and what they couldn't do. And Pat Hayden's one of those quarterbacks. Well, it'll be interesting now with one minute to go. Pat Hayden trying to get that psychological edge back and at least go back to the dressing room even because a fired up Saints team recovering two costly Los Angeles fumbles and the recovery and the subsequent events have given 10 of the New Orleans 17 points. Harold Jackson wide right, Billy Waddy wide left. Pollard trying to get to him. He goes down the middle oh. and he's got Harold Jackson and he finally dragged down by Clarence Chapman. Ernie Jackson thought he was going to break it up, but he got away from Jackson. They're trying to fight the clock. 45 seconds to go. That's a first down. They'll spot the ball on the New Orleans 19-yard line. They're Saints. not all in position yet. The Saints in no hurry. Hayden is, however, and whoops, there's the whistle. Now, what in the world would that be? There was so much movement, you wonder if time had run out on Hayden. Forty-two seconds to the half. Explain that to us. We don't understand. It's it. still Come first on. down. Maybe the officials weren't ready. Now Hayden backs off again, and time is out. Uh-oh, listen, listen to the Cajuns. Come on now. Boy, they get into a game here. That's Bobby Scott pointing out towards the ramp, trying to help the officials. I think they've got a disagreement between the two of them. Yeah, now Hank is coming down to All see. right, Hank, your call on now. You settle it. 17 to 10 in favor of the Saints. It might have been that 30-second clock. That's about the only thing we can think of with both clubs. The Saints very slowly going back to positions. The Rams in a hurry. The clock was running, and Hank probably feels that the Rams oh. had started a play <laughs> when they were not properly set. Look at Henry. You beat him to death with that program, won't he, Ben? Well, he was something when he worked for CBS up here in the booth. Tell him the story about the first game you worked with him. Where he had to stand in order to do the game, so we both wound up standing and walking, and we did the whole season, walking up and down. Oh, Henry. First and 10, 
And Hayden looking in the end zone deep to Billy Waddy. And he is knocked out of bounds inside the 10 yard line by Clarence Chapman. I don't believe Billy Waddy was intensely trying to get out of bounds, surprisingly enough, but I think Chapman just uh, forced him out. Knocked him out. You see uh, that so often with rookies that just don't have presence of mind. They haven't trained themselves mentally to get out of bounds. He looked like he was trying to turn it back upfield. The ball is on the New Orleans nine, second and one. And the Saints are leading the Rams 17 to 10. Hayden trying to get it even. Jackson is left and Waddy right. Capaletti and McCutcheon are split. Big rush by Bob Pollard. End zone pass caught by Jackson and touchdown. How in the world? Now, that's professional. He that is no real estate, and he was able to get down inside the end line. Pat Hayden doing a little scrambling back there. That dimension that Joe Namath cannot give you. And that's why he's a starting quarterback, and probably the only reason he's a starting quarterback for the Rams. But look at the job he, Jackson does keeping his feet in bounds. That's incredible. He just did, and a trio of Saints thinking unsaintly thoughts. So it is 17 to 16, New Orleans, and Rafael Septien trying to get the Rams even. He'll be kicking out of a hole from Nolan Cromwell. It's good. So the Saints and the Rams are all tangled up with 20 seconds left to go in the first half. 17-17 tie. Ben, let me get myself out of a trap here. I said the only reason he was starting for the Rams is because he could give you that scrambling in an added dimension. What I'm, what I'm referring to is I watched Joe Willie throw the ball yesterday in practice, and he could throw it as good as ever. He just doesn't have the mobility in the pocket that Pat Hayden does. And Hayden needed all the mobility in the world to get away from Bob Pollard on that last play, and somehow got the ball over the heads of three New Orleans defenders and got it into the hands of Harold Jackson, his second touchdown reception, and he would have made Gene Kelly or Fred Astaire proud the way he had those little puppies inside the back line. And what do you think old Herb Cross is going to say about the outcome of this game so far? But his old teammates were around. That's right, and Brandon Phyllis, too. Willis and Mouty going deep. We have 26 seconds to the half. And Sepien kicking rather short right now. Willis takes it on his 10 to the 20. To the 30, and down he goes, and the clock shows 18 seconds. A flag on the play. So 18 seconds to the half. 17 17. Remember, the Rams beat the Saints 14 7 in the Coliseum. Personal foul and a clip against New Orleans. Three penalties on kickoff for the Rams. If you're it? Hank Stram now, Alex, would you dare to. to Go deep. No, sir. I don't see any sense in it now. That'd be losing your poise a little bit early. So at 17 all and 18 seconds, Bobby Scott, we will see if he just sits on the ball. The official now ready to walk off the penalty against New Orleans. The Saints are very unfamiliar with this position being tied at halftime. They were, have incredibly been outscored in the first quarter, 49 to 7. So they're not even used to being even at half. Personal foul and a clip, although the official's microphone is gone, so we're not sure of the guilty party. 18 seconds to go to the half. The Saints and Bobby Scott, 17. The Rams and Pat Hayden, 17. And let's see what Scott does now. Galbraith and Strawn, the deep man out of the eye. Scott on a draw to Tony Galbraith. And he's out across the 20-yard line, and the Rams stack him up. Galbraith, accustomed to crowds, he has five brothers and six sisters. He, he doesn't know what it's like to be alone. <laughs> and when he gets the football, it's the same story. And with 11 seconds left, Bobby Scott doesn't want to be alone. He'll come over and talk to Hank Stram while the Rams huddle defensively. The New Orleans Saints are one and five. The Los Angeles Rams trying to stay ahead of Atlanta four and two. 
You know, everyone knows that science can split the atom, but tomorrow Jessica falls into the clutches of a society that can split human beings into two creatures, Alex, one good and the other evil. I try to explain myself away that way, too. Which one will triumph? Well, watch Logan Grund tomorrow night at 8, 7 Central. Good show. Ah, the very fact the dog is man's best friend, that's most disturbing. Gumbo, the mascot. What were you telling me about, it was last week, the Atlanta Falcon mascot, that beautiful bird on opening day? Yes, sir. Supposed to fly around the stadium twice and come on back down to his perch. Flew around the stadium twice and flew out. We haven't seen him since. A uh, small criticism of the ball club, huh? All right, second and five from the 21. Strong trying to get outside Youngblood. And Jim Youngblood hits him and he fumbles, lands the cover inside the 10. They're asking for time with two seconds. Look at that, the quick reaction by Dave Elmador. And Jim Youngblood caused the fumble after Jack Youngblood had just missed getting him. A big break. So the Rams, who had given up two costly fumbles that led to 10 points, are now in jeopardy of cashing in a New Orleans fumble. Take that's, a look. That's what's Mike Strong. Can't get outside. I didn't see where that came loose. Could you see there? Just as Jim Youngblood hit him and he hit the ground, and Elmendorf coming up from the rear just picked up the loose ball and moved it. So Hayden has one play, and the Rams will go for the field goal. It'll be Raphael Sepkin, Cromwell holding. They'll spot the ball on the 17, so he'll try a 27-yard field goal. And the Rams then would go into the dressing room leading by three. The kick is up, the kick is good, and the Rams get the psychological edge now as time runs out. They can go into the dressing room leading, albeit barely. Thanks to the talented toe of Rafael Sepien, who has kicked two today, so that gives him nine out of 13 for the year. The Rams leading on that costly fumble by New Orleans. Are you still chained to? Gotcha. The rechargeable Norelco rotary razor lets you walk away, free from nicks and cuts. Its 36 surgical steel rotary razor blades are safely protected inside three floating heads to give you a comfortable shave that's razor close, razor smooth, for up to three weeks on a single charge. The rechargeable Norelco rotary razor. It lets you walk away from... Gotcha! Ten years ago, no one knew me. I was part of the famous no-name defense. Then we built our reputation by being fast. Now, I don't want to lose that. I drink light beer from Miller because it doesn't fill me up. It has a third less calories than a regular beer, and it tastes great. Now, everyone knows me. Hey, I know you. You're, uh, uh, uh... Nick Bonacani. No, that's not it. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. When life's grind gets to you. Oh, Mustang. Mustang. Let a Mustang take you away. This is a great time to go Mustang, because this year, Mustang 2 is base sticker price less than last year. Mustang. The 78 Ford Mustang 2 T-Roof Convertible. Go Mustang. So beat the grind. Go Mustang. A better idea from Ford. Sunday, the fun starts at the grand opening of Archie's Tavern as the help walks out and the family fills in for a bubbling highball of hilarity. Then, Alice's nightclub moonlighting becomes a nightmare for Mel. we got two jobs, Alice. Pick one. Watch for her surprising decision. Sunday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. On November 5th, CBS Sports presents Championship Saturday, leading off at 2.30 p.m. Eastern with live coverage of the finals of the series championship of women's tennis, with Chris Everett heading a strong field. Followed by a special edition of the CBS Sports Spectacular, featuring live coverage of the World Middleweight Championship, with number one ranked Rodrigo Valdez taking on number two ranked Benny Briscoe for the title. And live coverage of the Washington, D.C. International, the major turf race in the United States, plus the world's strongest men competition featuring the tire toss that's Saturday, November 5th.
Earlier this week, Bob Tucker was signed by the Minnesota Vikings. He left the New York Giants in a huff. Well, he has Minnesota right now ahead of Atlanta. He caught the touchdown pass thrown by Fran Tarkenden. 14-7, the Vikings lead Atlanta. It has been a tough, tough game. Washington, Philadelphia. Joe Theismann, quarterback in the Redskins today. He has thrown two touchdown passes to tight end Gene Fugit. 23-10 in the third quarter. Cincinnati comes in with Kenny Anderson in the second half. They lead Houston and John Hadle right now, 10-3 in the fourth quarter. Cleveland getting even for losing to Kansas City on the last Sunday of last year, 30 to nothing in the third quarter. The New York Jets and New England. Grogan with a couple of touchdown passes, one to their top draft choice. Stanley Morgan of 52 yards, Morgan of Burner. He's got 4-4 speed. In the fourth, it's 24-13, the Patriots. San Diego now trailing Miami, 13-7. That game is in the fourth quarter. Clarence Duran intercepted three for San Diego in the first quarter. And of course, 16-0 at the half. Chicago leading Green Bay. Detroit and Dallas right now. Cowboys on the move, three seconds left in the half. 20 to nothing in the second quarter. And the game you're watching, Los Angeles leading New Orleans by a score of 20 to 17. That's at the half. And the NFL today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local station. Joyce risks her career by trying to keep Police Chief Fletcher from being eliminated from her TV series on The Betty White Show, tomorrow on CBS. This has been a big afternoon for the defensive backs, so in honor of that, we turn to Irv Cross to set our highlights. Okay, in the fourth quarter down in Atlanta, the Atlanta Falcons, uh, in a real tough defensive battle, has been indicated lead 14-7 in the fourth quarter. And early in the game, Van Targeting going to the air has a pass picked off by Rollin Lawrence, and he brings the ball up around the 49-yard line, setting up a scoring opportunity for his Falcon teammates. And Scott Hunter takes advantage of it right away, going to the air, hitting Greg McCreary, a tight end who's backing up Jim Mitchell, who's out with an injury today, and he draws first blood for the Falcons. They lead 7-0. Targeting comes back, however, in the second quarter with a, a touchdown pass of his own as he goes to the air to Sammy White, who hauls it in for a 55-yard strike, 7-7 in the second quarter. In the third quarter, the biggest run of the day, Chuck Foreman rambling 51 yards down to the Atlanta one-yard line, but don't go away, folks. It's not over yet. It takes Minnesota three plays, and finally from the sixth, Fran Targeting rolls out his, his brand-new tight end, Bob Tucker. Touchdown, and Atlanta leads 14-7 in the fourth quarter. So Minnesota is ahead right now by those Minnesota. seven points, Irv. And Fran Tarkenton, you know, has been intercepted 11 times already this season and only eight all of last year. New quarterback of Washington, Joe Theismann, Philadelphia against the Washington Redskins. Now, when you play the Redskins, they say get to the outside with some speed. Well, the only trouble here on this play is that the Eagles cough it up and Joe Theismann has got a chance to show George Allen and the Redskin brass what he can do. And he did it quickly. Gene Fugit is tied in for one touchdown. It became 7-0. Shortly after that, Theismann of the Redskin offense went to work again. And the former Notre Dame star backed out this time and looked for Danny Bugs. Bugs down at the 15-yard line. Theismann's second touchdown pass of the game to Fugit again, and it was 14-0. Eagles didn't quit. They haven't all year under Vermeil. They just haven't got the talent that the top teams have. Here's Betterson, ran it in. But the Redskins are very much in command, and I've just been handed word that Barkowski now warming up on the sideline for Atlanta. Irv? Atlanta, of course, Minnesota does lead that game 14-7 in the fourth quarter, but in the game you're watching, the Green Bay Packers and Chicago Bears, of course, are doing battle as they always do, and the Bears have a halftime lead of 16-0, and Walter Payton is the man, of course, who sets the pace. Payton here goes down to the five-yard line early in the game, setting up a Johnny Musso touchdown run, and Chicago took a 6-0 lead, missed the extra point. Walter Payton once again, this time goes all the way from the six yard line, touchdown, and the score right now in the half, at halftime, of course, is a Chicago 16, Green Bay nothing. And Irvin, the fourth quarter, New England leading the New York Jets by a score of 24 to 13. Okay, the reason for that pause is that one of the networks went back to the ballpark. Let's us now resume with some highlights. We have got Detroit against the Dallas Cowboys. Let's take a look at some of this action. Cowboys only unbeaten team. Herrera kicks a field goal 45 yards, and the Cowboys up by six. Mark Washington intercepts this pass by Landry, and here comes the return. Irv, these defensive backs are going wild on this Sunday afternoon. Billy Joe Dupree caught this 15-yard touchdown pass from Staubach. And it became 13 to nothing. 
Detroit made only two first downs in the first half. Cowboys get it again on that interception by Hegman. And Scott Laidlaw will be on the other end of the Staubach pass. 23 to nothing. At the half, the Dallas Cowboys, the only unbeaten team in the NFC, are rolling right along, Irv. <laughs> I tell you, I, I wish I could give you a highlight because I'm not quite sure of the package. Take that package. <laughs> All right, let's go. LA and New Orleans right now, of course, during battle down the Superdome. Let's take it right now. Pat Hayden, starting a quarterback, Spam was around here and picked up Harold Jackson in the end zone. 18 yard touchdown. Rams lead 7 to 3. Ron makes a nice play here for the New Orleans Saints on a key fourth down run. Takes the ball down to the LA three yard line, setting up a scoring opportunity for the Saints. Galbraith does the rest, goes over, and New Orleans led at this point in the game 10 7. For third down and nine on New Orleans 14 yard line, you see a blitz here from the strong safety Chuck Chris, which sets up. Uh, Another series of plays. Let's see this uh, Blanchard puts down to Bill Waddy, who, who fumbles the ball when he's hit here. He's going to be hit by a swarm of New Orleans Saints, and Pat Hughes picks up the ball for the Saints and sets up a field goal opportunity for the Saints. And they take a field goal. You know it's Groom catches the touchdown pass. They take a 17-10 lead. Pat Hayden doesn't give up, however. He comes back to his favorite receiver, Harold Jackson. He makes the catch, 17-17 at that point, and... Uh, where are we now in that game? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're watching us. I, I think they're still I think okay. It's <laughs> Barkowski now is in the game for the Atlanta Falcons. They're trying to come back against Minnesota. The score here at the Superdome in New Orleans. At halftime, the Los Angeles Rams 20 and the New Orleans Saints 17. A fired up Saints club taking advantage of two costly Ram fumbles. But then in the closing moments of the first half, New Orleans fumbled and the Rams were able to capitalize on a field goal by Rafael Septien to take a three point lead into the dressing room. So it's halftime here in a dancing city in the Bayou country. And for the moment at least, the Rams leading by three, 20 to 17. Mr. Highboom. Huh? Ah, Mr. Highboom. Yes. Yeah. We understand that you're taking a trip with us tomorrow. Yeah? Yeah, well, we want you to know that Avis is working right now. Avis? It's vacuuming your car, checking the oil, oil? brakes. Even the air in the spare tire. Spare tire. One of the ways Davis tries harder is working at night, so you're ready Honor. in the morning. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it's a uh, Chrysler Cordoba, and it's blue. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. America, you've been changing. Coming, going, changing, growing. The things that make up life. Why is Bank America card becoming Visa? To keep up with you. You're traveling, you're moving, you're taking more from life. Today you need money that's good around the corner, all across America, and in 117 countries around the world. That's why Bank America card is becoming Visa, the most widely recognized card in the world. Visa, we're keeping up with you. 